All right. Well, I had a good time with today's message, uh, especially studying it. Uh, a dream of being a scientist, I guess. I don't know. I'm very, very intrigued by all these things that I'm discovering. But here's a man who knows a little bit more about science and technology than I do. So, uh, Russ, as you listen to the sermon on creative juices, specifically large and small, God doing things large and small, uh, what stood out to you or what uh, could we explore a little further on this topic? Well, what stood out to me was this verse in Hebrews 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. The word being Jesus. God didn't only create everything. It's not a case of, well, I've made that. There it is. He upholds it. He keeps it going. He makes it run. He makes it do what it's supposed to do. And think of the immensity of that. I mean, if we just create, take a, a grain of sand, which was made of, what was it, 300 billion trillion atoms or something, they thought? Or yeah, the estimation based upon my comparison of data was uh, 200 billion trillion atoms Right. in one grain of sand. And every one of these atoms is a nucleus with neutrons and protons orbiting around it like a little mini solar system. God controls all that, the movement, the motion, what it does, how it works. If we took our best computer and tried to simulate what God is doing in that one little grain of sand, we wouldn't even come close. Yeah. There just isn't that amount of power. Yeah. It wouldn't even touch a billionth of a percent of it. You know, the computer would overheat and burn up and disappear on the floor such a picture of how powerful God is and what he does and while he's doing that we can assume probably with his little finger yeah you know it just gives you this you, know, you get this feeling of awesomeness and power with the pure size of what we know of the universe yeah. but then what is happening in just that tiny little grain of sand can blow your mind away as well yeah and like you say, yet he cares for us. Yet he cares for us. Mm -hmm. And you get into the, the second point, which is about the kingdoms. I don't think I quoted from Benjamin Franklin in the mm -hmm. message. Um, he was a deist. In that he believed that God started all and left. Uh, but he was an insincere deist for several reasons, by the way. Uh, he stopped trying to convert people to deism after a short period of time because everybody that he converted went out and destroyed themselves, basically. <laughs> Um, but at the end of his of his life, uh, he said, uh, I've lived a long time, and I can tell you one thing, kingdoms don't rise and fall without God's involvement. No. Quite a statement for a deist. Uh, and, and so whether you're talking about science, molecules, the universe, kingdoms, kids, you know, time, whatever, um, he reveals his majesty and his might. And as you said, um, our response is just to stand in awe of him and to worship him. And you know, Jesus said to the woman at the well that God is seeking for worshipers. So I can't help but be convinced in my mind that God was pleased with what we talked about here this morning. Yeah. Just because we all kind of lean back and go, Whew, God's way bigger than I can even begin to fathom or imagine. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's like I can hear the Spirit saying, now we can start a conversation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, We can't drag him down from the heavens. He yeah. steps down on purpose. You know, to our level, that's what the story of the incarnation is. But uh, man, it's it's worth more research, more study. Even though it's just mathematics or just science, it's very spiritual once you get into it. Yes, it is. I mean, we think of what God does in very large proportions. God gave me a job, right? God healed my wife, and yet we can see from like the example of the sand and the molecules that what God does is at such an incomprehensible tiny level. Yep. When Jesus healed a man with a withered hand, literally that was done, if you want to be scientific, and I am very literal, sure. at beyond the molecular level. Right. But there's God doing what God does, making things do what they are supposed to do, yep. making us to worship him. Amen. And so let's worship him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, worship him as you think about the fact that he gave you your spouse or gave you your job or gave you your children. Or worship him as you realize he gave me this bowl of cereal I'm eating because <laughs> it's all a product of his. Every good gift, every perfect gift, every mm -hmm. perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights. Pretty incredible stuff.
Well, dig deeper. Uh, maybe you'll have a scientific mind or a mathematic mind, and you'll go way deeper than, uh, than I did in the sermon. And uh, worship your Creator, and then obey Him. Amen.